Good afternoon, happy crafters, how are you all? Thank you for joining me, Tony Derrick, in my live studio. I'm so excited about today's studio for many reasons and I'm busting a gut to tell you all about it. So if this is the first time you've ever tuned in to us on our YouTube channel, um, it's a big welcome from us and thank you. So if you are watching on Facebook, don't forget to pop a comment below. This puts you in with a chance to win one of our studio makes. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. This ensures everybody can see and share and you know, utilize the inspiration that is put out on this channel. It's there for everybody to share. So I am back on Create and Craft this Wednesday, so there will not be a studio, unfortunately, but because it's not live here, it doesn't matter. You can still catch me live over on Create and Craft. I have two live hours and those are to be confirmed, so stay tuned for those. In today's studio, I am gonna show you a couple of new products, three brand new products, and they are not stamps, and they are not dies, and they are not stencils. I'm so excited. So before I go in to show you the new products, check out this video and I'll be back with you in a minute. So just looking at the video, you're probably thinking, okay, what's going on? So I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about what's been happening for the last six to 12 months. So we are now collaborating with a young company, a Japanese company, who are a fabulous family-run company who are in the arts and crafts supply business. Their products are simply amazing. And how did it all come about? Well, you all know that I love to paint, I love to colour, I love to try new things. So we've been in conversation with the lovely and fabulous family company and the new products that we've brought together today, we have been working on together quite heavily. And I wanted something new, something fresh, something different, you know, for people to try at home. You know, it all becomes a little bit monotonous. It all be blends into one when we see all these fabulous products. But I want to try some different things and I'm hoping that you guys at home are gonna love them as much as I have. Now, I have been using some of the products in some of my earlier videos throughout the course of the last few months and some of you have seen them and picked up on them and asked me about them. So I'm just gonna show you a quick video now of me using one of the brand new products from Hi Ham, can't even say the word now, Maya Meets Himmy, here you go.
I hope you enjoyed that video. I had so much fun making it. I have never touched a pastel in my life. Um, I was told they are easier than watercolours, which you know is my favourite. So I gave them a go and they were just simply amazing. It's a brand new craft to me. I have got way, way more videos on that product to show you and I will really be releasing them over the course of the next few weeks, but they are really, really lovely. So that's one of the products that I'm going to talk you through very quickly before we get to our demonstration. We also have two other products as well from this very company now i will be honest with you these products will be going to tv we are working that close with this company that um, they will be brought to tv but at the moment the company is still in the small phase and as they are growing along with myself um, the capability the manufacturing and you know getting things to the uk will be there so keep practicing with them if you get them if you like them but they will be showing their faces on creating craft tv and i am so so excited it's what they call another feather in your cap is it or something like that but it's not a case of that anymore is it? it's a case of you getting something in your hand that you're going to enjoy share with your crafty friends maybe take your artwork and your crafting to that next level should you wish so i'll just show you the oil pastels first so they come in a case of 36. Now, I don't know any company, crafting company in particular, that's doing pastels. So these are like something completely different to what we're so used to, but they create the most amazing, vibrant looks. And they're so oily in the sense that you can blend them with your finger and things like that. So, you know, if you're looking for something new and your mojo's gone and you're sick of all the day-to-day -day products that are already on the market, I encourage you to try these. Everything I'm showing you today is available on the website and again I will be honest with you we haven't got lots. We've got enough but not lots. So if you do like anything today all you have to do is go to the go to our website pop in FBL Facebook Live I can't get my words out I'm that excited. Facebook Live and it brings up all the products that we've had in this show and previous shows and it's easy access for you there so you're not having to root all over the website for new products so if I'm just going to open them here they've got 36 colors and as you can see you've got your color tone right from black you have a white in there and then you have all your color tones in there now they're coming obviously a stick form as probably all do all pastels do and as you use them you just tear the paper down and they get smaller and smaller and smaller so I just have a look on here so all the colour core range is on the back here, but I do encourage you to do a swatch. And if you do do a swatch, pop it in the lid and then you know exactly what colour you're going to be picking up when you do your artwork and things like that. Now the video that I've just done there, what you've just watched, I would say it took me about 20 minutes. Obviously it's sped up for the purpose of the tutorial, but you know, all I did was I just went onto social media, found something that sparked my interest and I just went for it with the beautiful colours that are in this box and I was really chuffed with it if I'm completely honest. So these are the new pastel oil range here at Stamps by Me. So I'm just going to set this aside and I'm going to show you another product. So the second product in the range are watercolour tubes. Now we have watercolours already here at Stamps by Me. We have our wheel, we have our colour essence, we do not have tubes. Now these tubes don't have to replace what you've already purchased from us here at Stamps by Me or another company. They're not there to do that. What these are here to do is maybe take your artwork to that next level. So if you're happy with the watercolours you have in your stash at home, stick with them. You don't need to change. But if you're wanting to progress into maybe a watercolour, not artist as such, but take your artwork from just a normal flat colour to being able to blend with it, being able to do better wetting wet techniques with, then these are new to the family. So when you take these out of the box, you have two trays in there. There are 18 colours within the range. Again, on the back, you get your colour range on there. And again, I encourage you to do a colour swatch because it's easier to see and quick to locate colours when you need to create something in a rush. They have a fancy cap on, which is fabulous. And it has like a clip technology on there rather than your traditional watercolours. They have a clip on there, which is way, way better. No leaks, no fuss, no mess, no um, oils or, sorry, watercolours all around the ring and things like that. It's really, really lovely. Now, the difference between these and the difference between our traditional ones is these are pigmented to um, probably the best you could buy, really, within the crafting industry. Now... 
I've been playing with these and playing and playing and playing. Now, like I said earlier, they're not here to replace what you already have in your stash, but if you are wanting to progress and try new things and maybe get a better finish, you can do that as well. So just give it some thought. I'm not here to hard sell. I'm not here to push you anything, but it's like your die cutting machines. You have a die cutting for one thing, a die cutting for another. Everything has its place and that is how it's going to be in these um, across the board with these products. Okay, so these are stunning and I am going to use these in my demonstration and show you how to get the most out of them. So pigmented, they'll last you years, absolute years. So I'm just going to set these aside. There are videos of me already using these in earlier videos. So I encourage you to go back and have a look at those ones. So the last product in the family this is the third product in the family. Let me tell you, there's going to be about 15, 20 products by the time we've finished. We are working on so many things. I'm so excited and so is um, Create and Craft about all of this. So basically, these are the silk crayons. Now, these are a water-based crayon. So if you're interested in your mixed media, your watercolouring, your backgrounds, your washers, all of those things that you love to do, these are fabulous. Again, highly pigmented, colour range on the side basically you get this colour range in here so again you get your white which is absolutely gorgeous on black card and I will show you right now so you take them out of the box they've got a cushion grip here these are so so lovely you'll not be disappointed with these you take the lid off and you've got your crayon within there and then to make it um, go higher or lower you just twist the bottom here can we see there? Sorry. And it gets bigger. So when you start to wear it down, it goes higher and lower. So they are called silks for a reason. They are so silky. None of this scratch, 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 trying to get them to blend or bleed, get them to go together. They're so silky, you just have to do a light um, finger rub over the top. Spray them with the water, get your drips on your pages and things like that. They are gorgeous. So I'll just show you this red one. Again, make sure you do your colour swatch. So if you do buy these, please let me know how you get on with them. We have two pages you can show your makes. We have Stamps By Me page, Facebook, and we have our Eureka fan page. The design team have already, some of the design team have had their hands on these already and I have had some fabulous feedback. So I know if you do get them home, I can't wait to see your products. Not your products your finished makes getting all my words wrong today so another fab fabulous addition to the stamps by me range so let's get straight into the demos what you've all come to watch okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab a piece of cardstock and we are going to be using the lovely members gift so if you haven't already had the members gift um, it's a free stamp worth $17.99 over on Create and Craft and all you have to do is pay the postage on the stamp. There is also a coordinating die available if you want it. Now there are many tutorials using this so again I encourage you to go back and watch the other videos that we, ha we have already made. So I just grab my Eureka. So I'm just going to just swap this piece out first of all because that's part of my card and I'm just going to stamp out the lovely members gift large stamp now we're just going to use it in a different way today so we've always used it as a large stamp haven't we well we're going to snip into it today and make it a little bit different so I'm just using a black VersaFine ink pad and the reason why I'm using this one is because it's waterproof so it's perfect for all your watercolouring so I'm just going to give it a good old push down. And then you get this beautiful crisp image. I don't need to re-stamp that, it's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Set that aside. So I am going to use the lovely um, watercolours. And I'm going to do a purple and a pink flower. So, I'll just leave those there. So before I came to air, I already stamped this and cut the pieces out so you can see here. 
so I used the pink, the purple and the green. So I snipped the elements out, the bits that I thought I might use. So I've got one, two, three, and here's one I didn't paint because I really want to show you how fabulous these paints are. So I'm just going to set that aside. I'm just going to pop it on my Eureka. Now with these, a little goes a long way. And when I say a, a little, I mean so little. So I do encourage you to get an inexpensive um, palette of some form or maybe in your wells of your Eureka because if you've got too much, um, you can reactivate it and use it at a later date. But because it'd be such a waste for you to keep cleaning the paint away. So I'm just going to pop the tiniest little, I really need, a, it needs to be smaller than that to be honest, but there's a bit of purple. I will leave it in my palette, I will not waste it, I do not waste paint. So we'll just go with those for now. So I'm just going to get a little paint brush. So I'm just got some clean clear water here and my brush and I'm just going to show you how lovely this colour blends. I'm just going to zoom in. Just take a tiny little bit of this purple here. Some more water. make sure that there we go so I've just picked up the tiniest little bit here and you can see if I just shut tilt that on the side can you see how much paint is there there's the tiniest amount and look how much color it's generated it's absolutely fabulous a little goes a long way so I'm just going to pop the purple onto each petal here so just solid I'm not doing any fancy techniques no light and shade we're using this color I'm just going to lay one layer of the purple flat just all over this card. Just add a bit more water. So I've just laid one bit of purple all over the flower, like so. So what I'm going to do now is going to clean my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this pink tiniest bit and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop some of this pink into the petals whilst it's a little bit wet don't forget watercolors always dry back a little bit lighter so I've put there is some dots and some line suggestion within this stamp so if you just follow those lines that I've drawn in all those dots, I don't think you can go far wrong. There we go. So I'm just going to set that aside and just let it dry itself. And we'll move on to the next stage of our card. So I'll just set that aside. And we'll just take the camera back out just so you can see what I'm going to do on the next stage. I'm just going to set that aside. And then we're going to go back to the piece of cardstock that I told you about earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a background technique. So I am just going to get some tissue paper to stop the mess all over my Eureka. Just going to pop it in like so. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to grab my pad and I'm going to stick with the same colour theme so it all coordinates nicely and I'm going to do a background so I am going to pop a little bit more colour on there. So not too much but enough because I really want this background to be as vibrant as possible. There we go. So I'm going to spray um, this background here. So I'm just going to spray it all over with some water. So I've got a nice coverage on there. Then I'm going to take a larger brush this time. Just make sure it's wet and not dry. And then we're just going to pop some of the colour on there. Now this is where you can really see the pigment in the ink. These make could make a beautiful... Um, Aurora Borealis night scene with these. 
So I'm just popping random colour now. But before I pick up the other colour, I'll always clean my brush so I get a defined colour in there so I don't get the contamination. So I'll just pop some colour down. So I'm not going with any sort of theme. I'm literally just going to get the colour down, but try my best not to work it so the colours just blend into an awful mess. And when I've got the colour down, I will spritz it again with my water. There we go. And just let it work its magic. So I'm just going to dry that off slightly. I don't want it to be completely dry because for the next technique it does need to be a little bit wet. If you have got a puddle just try and push it to the outer edge because if you push it into the centre what will happen is you'll end up with a bit of a mess if you can. Put that tissue up, let it drink it. So that is not dry, I don't want it to be dry. So what I'm going to do is the stencil i have a stencil here from the collection we launched last week on tv on friday sorry i'll just move this one out of the way and get a clean one so i'm just going to pop this back on a clean one i like to keep it clean and then i'm just going to take the stencil and i'm just going to pop the stencil just random, it's going to have no formation. I'm just going to pop the stencil on top like so. Now you can hold it down with your magnets if you want to. And I'm just going to let it just work its magic basically. So I'm just going to give it a second to sit on top. And then with this tissue, I'm just going to take a little bit of the colour out in those areas. So... Now if you leave it like that and put some weight on it, it will still work, you know, you don't have to drink the colour out. You still get, can I just peel that back and show you, you still do get a little bit of a pattern, so it's all down to, can you see that there? It's not showing very well. But it's all down to what you want for your sort of background and what you're trying to achieve really. I'm just going to drink some of that colour up there because it's puddling, to take some of that out. So I am just giving it a second because it is still quite wet. But I didn't want to dry it with my gun too much because as soon as it gets to dry stage, it's really difficult. So then I'm just going to pop the tissue on top. And I'm just going to lift out the colour within those areas, within that stencil. So we did a little bit of a video a few weeks ago using the bleaching technique. And it's very similar to that one. Um, but that was by using a paintbrush, wasn't it? So if you lift up now, what happens is, look at that beautiful pattern under there. I'm just going to take a little bit more out there. Right, so let's just pop that to one side. Yep, I'm going to leave that to do its, do its magic. So let's just... Move this magnet out of the way and we'll move on to the next stage. We'll just let that work its magic. So I'll just pop that to one side and we'll come back to the next stage. So we're going to need a lovely sentiment for this card. So I have cut already a piece of cardstock and I needed a sentiment which is just on one single line. So the sentiment that I am going to be using today is within this collection here. It's one of our earlier stamps. 
and it's got these lovely like uppercase sentiments on there so you can use whatever you want to really and I'm just going to go simply for happy birthday keep it simple so I'm just going to pop happy birthday along here look and I'm going to do this one in black make sure it's straight have to make sure it's straight if it's not straight sorry it's um, perfect and I'm just going to do it again in a lovely black ink pad so it pops from the page there we go I'm happy with that one So I'll leave that in there because that'll work for my next card. So let's bring our artwork back in, see what's happening with it. So then when you take it off you get this beautiful like abstracty pattern, it's absolutely gorgeous. Completely different to how we traditionally probably use, just going to clean this off. Um, but it just gives you a completely different look to what um, you can achieve in some other things. So what we just did there was we just popped the stencil onto the wet cardstock and just let it do its thing. We didn't do any fa anything fancy. So I'm just going to dry this off completely now so I know I'm happy with it. You can see the different style of background you get from popping the, wet, the stencil onto something wet. Now if you're thinking well, that's a little bit messy for me, I'm not really into all that, that's fine too. Maybe do inking with a blending tool through the stencil so you don't have to have it so heavy just ink some colour through. So <clears throat> there we have that but before it's looking a little bit lost in my opinion so I am just going to pop some um, white splashes on there. I do like my white and I am going to pop some coloured ones on there as well. So basically all I'm going to do is wet my brush, I'm going to pick up some of the white and it's a true white which is fabulous and I'm just going to make sure there's some water on my brush and I'm just going to pop some dimension onto my background there we go so if you're finding when you're doing it it's not really going on it means you haven't got enough water in your brush so just keep adding the water and you will get it in the end so I'll just clean that off set this aside So I'll just try this off and then we'll get our card constructed. I'm just going to um, take away the blobs on there because they won't be dry. And I've got another, I've got another demonstration today, which is fabulous. So what I've got here is a, sip, a strip of silver. So I'm just going to glue this one flat. And this is where your card comes together. So maybe you've created your card this far and you're thinking, do you know what? I really don't like it. I do encourage you to stick with it until you get right to the very end because it's normally at the very end when the card comes together and then you're thinking oh do you know what I've surprised myself there that's actually really nice 
So then I've got our lovely happy birthday sentiment here. I'm just going to overlay this so I've got the silver banner just at the top like so, nothing at the bottom. Just going to give that a second to stick. Like so. And we'll bring in our lovely card, which is, this is the Gossip Glitter card. Get lots of glue on there because I know if somebody's going to win this one, I would hate for it to drop apart before it gets there. you can see already it's coming together a lovely card already so you just need to make sure it's all stuck down and in place and then the elements that were painted ahead of time which were these ones here so this is the members gift as I told you and instead of using it as one piece we've broken into it a little bit haven't we so just a different way of using it rather than your traditional one piece so before I go ahead and stick anything down, I always position what I'm going to do first so I know it's going to look okay. So so I think I've done enough to create a little bit of a bouquet going on. So something that looks like this has now been changed into something completely different now. I'm just going to go for this one here. Then I'm going to pop this one flat underneath. Make sure you can still see the happy birthday. And then this one I'm going to have a look. Put this one under here. And we'll pop this one flat underneath here. A little bit better. Then we have these lovely elements that we can just pop in where we've got a little bit of a space where we're thinking, do you know what, we need to just um, fill that little area. So I just used the snipping side of things with regards to the leaves. I just uh, what I did was I stamped it out twice, stamped it out twice and then I cut the bits I required. There we go. So to finish I would just pop some of these lovely coloured sequins around. So I'll just pop some dots around. So maybe use a precision glue head. So, as you all know now, we try and do our sped up videos for you. So, you know, if you don't want to hear the chit chat from me, that's absolutely fine. I understand there is the capability there now to watch the videos um, on quick speed. I think they're about one, one minute 30. So, 
I'll just do one more down here because you have to work in a three. There we go. So there is card number one. So I hope you like it. You know, it's still the same stamp as what you've all been create all been using over the last few weeks, the free stamp over on Create and Craft. It's just um, being chopped into and made slightly different. Okay, so I will now move on to demonstration number two, and it is using the exact same stamp, but I have done a lot of the work ahead of time already, so we can get through it because I'm conscious we're running out of time, which I thought we might because, you know, I like to talk about new products a lot. So I'm just going to move on to demonstration number two. So basically, again, ahead of time, I stamped the member's gift and I used the beautiful colours from the new my arrange and what i did this time was i used one color so because i've got it in my palette i am just going to color one of the the flower heads and this time i'm going to do a wet in wet technique so basically all you do is you wet the flower head all over cover it with some water and then when you come to drop your color in your color will only go where there's water so just pick up some of this pink vermilion. When you drop it in, you just dot it in and the water carries it. Can you see there? And again, like I said earlier, it always dries back lighter. So if you did buy the watercolour books, these paints are perfect um, and of a high end to do all of those lovely techniques in there. You know, it will take your artwork to a whole new level, in my opinion. But like I said to you earlier, if you have got all of our earlier products, please don't think you have to swap them. You don't. They are perfect for your card making and just having fun with. If you are wanting to progress um, and taking your artwork to that next level, these may be a way you want to go. So basically, I painted all of that and I just left it to air dry. Then I used the coordinating die and pop, cut it out. So we got this sort of look here. I didn't, you know, do anything fancy. Just drop some colour in there. So this time, on the background on this one, I am going to use the crayons. Now, this is so cool. So you're going to have so much fun with these. So if you're a bit of a loose artist, a loose mixed media fan, perfect for this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scribble across the top of this watercolour card here. And I'm just going to go, say, this far down. Nothing fancy. So as you can see, it's texturised this card. And then I'm just going to go purple in the middle. Get some nice colour on there. And I'm going to go back to the pink. Some nice colour on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this piece of card. I'm going to spray it from the bottom up you'll see what I mean in a second so I'm spraying the whole area and I'm working my way up to the colour and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the card and what will happen is you'll get this beautiful like bleed which will go down Now you obviously at home have got more time and patience for this, but I'm just going to keep spraying at the top, get that lovely pigment in those pens to go further down the card. So you can see, I'm just going to hold it upright for one second and then I will show you, because obviously on a slant it's not working very well. Look at that! How cool is that? So I'm just giving it a second. You could tap it if you wanted to, speed it up a little bit. But I would certainly do several backgrounds with the, that, with these. So I'll just set that aside, get tidy my station. Now I could spend ages playing with that and getting it to do different coloured backgrounds, but I'm just going to dry it off because I need to get this card complete.
Now I can see there straight away there's still loads of pigments up there so I could have kept spraying and got it to go down but I'm okay with it. Each card will be different I guess. So the watercolour card that I'm using is my own and will be with you very soon. Um, I'm expecting a delivery of it imminently so as soon as it lands I will let you all know but in the meantime you can just use what I've always used in the past which is just Windsor and Newton. Um, that's the one that I've been using for years until I found my own. There we go. So again you could add splashes on there and make it as amazing as you wanted to but I'm um, speed crafting now to get this card complete. Please drop a comment and let me know which card you like the best, which one would you have a go at? You know you might already have in your stash products very similar that you're happy with and absolutely love. This is not this studio is not about a hard sell. If you've got something in your stash that can create this look let us know, show us what you're making. We love to see everybody's makes. So I've just stuck this onto this, um, I think this one is the Morganite Gossip Glitter card, just to add some sparkle. So I'm just giving it a second to adhere and then we'll get this card constructed. Make sure my other one's flat. I'm a little bit of a funny onion when it comes to sticking matte and layers. So, Let's just get the trusted Eureka and stamp the sentiment. And I think we'll just go for the same sentiment as we did for our other one. In fact, I'm just going to pop this under my Eureka and then it will stick flat. So let's go for the happy birthday again. Make sure it's straight. It is sticking <laughs> slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this one onto here as we did before. Onto this um, coordinating gossip card. Oh, so now start putting that on there. Now you can, it's like on an arch, but it's okay. We will run with it. And we'll stick this on the card. So what I'm going to do is, because uh, there's still a lot of pigment on here, you can see the clear line, we're going to use this one to hide that line look. So where there's a will, there's a way. And then the beautiful one that we have gone ahead and coloured, I'm just going to pop on here with some pads. So you can leave the stamp as an entity on its own if you're not confident in the just going ahead and fussy cutting a few of the elements or you can leave it as an entity on its own if you did get the coordinating die that does help but I do appreciate a lot of people like to fussy cut as well. So let's have a look which way would be better. No, I have to pop the arch around there. I'm just going to leave that one as is. So two beautiful cards, two very similar techniques, two completely different products and one stamp. So I hope you've enjoyed today's videos. I always enjoy the studio. I always enjoy trying to inspire, inspire others. I get so much inspiration from lots of other crafters also. So if we can you know, create, share, inspire, you know, then we're doing a good job, I would suggest. So if you do like the video, please give us a thumbs up and I will catch you all next Monday. But before then, you will catch me Wednesday live on Create and Craft TV. I'll see you all then. Take care. Bye.